Howdy, Aguilin. We're back with episode 7 of Home Turf. It's been a long two weeks, a lot of things going on in Aggie sports. I've been out for spring break, went on vacation with some family and friends. And But you know what? We're back. We're back with our next episode. We got a lot of things to cover, and I'm going to sit here and cover it all for y'all. A lot to expect this upcoming week with Aggie baseball, Aggie basketball. Aggie basketball is in the Final Four of the NIT, so they're traveling in New York City, and I'm traveling as well. Once this podcast is over, I'll be going to Houston, where I'm going to fly out tomorrow morning on Tuesday. But first, got to do this podcast for the fans, man. But hey, we're back. Episode 7, let's get to it. Alright, so first off, got to talk about a little March Madness. Just sat here and watched St. Peter's glorious run come to an end against UNC. It's first 15 seed to make the Elite Eight. It's crazy they even got there with the teams they beat. I mean, it was, it's was it been a great March Madness. Next weekend's going to be awesome. We have Duke against North Carolina, Nova against Kansas. Duke is the only team I had on my original bracket making it to the Final Four that's still there. I mean, I have Duke winning it. Hopefully they secure the bag. Uh, however, everything else has been kind of stinking. Only thing I'm really proud of, Arkansas beat Gonzaga. Other than that, my whole bracket was trash. And I'm sure everyone listening to this had the same reaction like who would have known that St. Peter's would have had all those upsets anyways I mean it's exciting next week we got Duke against North Carolina Villanova against Kansas to me Duke I hope Duke wins because my main bracket has Duke but then I would Nova and Kansas I'm kind of hoping Kansas wins that would be a pretty cool ending that's Duke won their first championship coach K won his his first championship against Kansas and hopefully you'll win his last. That's going to be fun to watch next weekend in NOLA. I'm excited. I mean, my bracket's trash. I did a second chance bracket on ESPN. That was even worse. However, it's good basketball. It's fun to watch. And this is my favorite time of year, man. I told you earlier, March Madness is my favorite holiday. And so it's lived up to the expectations this year. Great basketball. I'll be watching the NIT Tuesday, watching those final four games, Xavier versus St. Same- Bonaventure and Washington State versus A and M. I'll be there in the concrete jungle, ready to get that. Uh, ready to start covering that and see if A and M can secure the bag and win the NIT championship. So a little bit about what went on last week. I mean, we all know. Let's start. Let's start off with the twenty fifth. What happened the twenty fifth on Friday? Women's golf came in second at the. Liz Murphy Collegiate Classic in Athens, Georgia. The question beats South Carolina. Moved on to the championship. We'll, we'll say later what happened in that championship. Women's tennis won uh, against Tennessee in Knoxville. Men's tennis won against Prairie View A&M, 7-0. Um, softball took an L. Men's tennis took an L on that Friday. And then baseball took an L in game one, 5-6. A lot of iffy stuff happened at the end of that game. We'll get into it. On that Saturday, question lost in the championship against Auburn in Auburn. However, they had an amazing season. Baseball won game two against Auburn, 5-4. to four. Soccer, men's soccer won 3-1 to one at Baylor. Softball lost game two against Georgia, 7-8 to eight in eight innings. And then what happened today? Baseball lost. Just got done covering that game, 13-9. Women's tennis won seven to nothing. Softball won sixteen to eight against Georgia to complete that series. Men's tennis won four to three, and they were. I'm waiting right now on men's tennis how they did against UTSA, but that's kind of went on last weekend. I could go over the past two weeks, but everyone kind of knows what went up with that. A lot of stuff coming this upcoming week, and I'm going to be really excited to talk about that. But hey, let's get into the needy greedy man. A and M baseball, second SEC series this year. They lost 1-2. to Broke a record. I mean, it wasn't on the baseball field. However, in the stands, they had a record attendance at the three-game series. 19,622 people showed up. Crazy, man. Crazy. I mean, they lost, like I said, lost the first game 5-6. Once that game 5-4, lost the final game 9-13. But it was packed the whole time. It was, it was a good time. It was a bunch of good games. 
there's an even bigger game coming up this Tuesday that I want to get into, and that is A&M versus UT in Austin. Looking, A&M's looking to get their third consecutive win against UT. They won last year and then in Austin the year before. And this UT team, is everyone's been talking about them. They're coming off a pretty big upset at in Lubbock, Texas against Texas Tech. They lost the first game 4-5. to five. I'm sure if you saw it on Twitter, it was the stolen base that got stole home, scored, got the dub. Game two, they lost twelve to it was twelve to twelve. Bases loaded, grand slam. Lubbock went crazy. All the Texas Tech players went crazy. Everyone's throwing horns down. I love to see it. And then game three, I guess those first two games really ticked them off, and they won twelve to one in seven innings. This is a this is still a scary team despite the loss. They're probably gonna be very upset about the last year, looking to come come back and get revenge on A and M. They have this guy Murphy Staley. He's their DH leading their team in bat, uh, for a batting average in a 4.74 right now. Right behind him, this scary guy from El Paso, Texas, Ivan Melendez, first baseman. He's already He has 13 homers this season, and he's tied his career high in homers because last season he had 13, and we're not even – we're at the start of conference play, and he already has 13. He's hitting a second-best throw, non-batting average. This UT team is very scary. Very good. They were pretty good last year, too, and it went, and a and and beat them. So we don't know what could happen this Tuesday. It's going to be a lot of games at 6.30 p.m. in Austin, Texas. So if you want to make the drive, if you're not going to New York, make the drive there, show support. It's going to be a, That's going to be a fun game to watch. I'll try to catch it on the screen. So here's the big news, basketball. After we never got to talk about it after they were scammed cheated whatever you whatever your feelings are towards it they did not make the march madness tournament uh, a lot of people are upset by this however they've been playing really good in the nit been dominating teams left and right it looks kind of too easy for them i think this first game coming against washington state might might because the pac-12 is a good basketball conference in my opinion i mean you got arizona oregon ucla all those cats and then like Washington State is a very solid team. I mean, they came fifth in the Pac-12, lost to UCLA in the second round of the tournament. Um, they beat, so far in this NIT tournament, they beat Santa Clara, SMU, who was number ranked going into the NIT, and they beat BYU by 22 points. And this guy, Michael Flowers, man, is someone who, got, who A&M's going to have to watch out for come this Tuesday. He leads the team in points per game with 14.4. Gets still three assists per game, too, which is really nice. But that last game against BYU, he had 27 points. They shot 33.3% from uh, the three, which is better than what A&M shot last game, 33%. If you're shooting 33 and above, 33 is average. Anything above is, pre- is a pretty good game. That's what they shot. And something that A&M basketball specializes in is turnovers. And this Washington State team is pretty good at that as well. They forced 13 t- turnovers against their six against BYU. I mean, they've been put, they're hot right now. You're in the Final Four of any tournament, a tournament of 64 teams. I mean, if you're hot, you're hot, no matter who you are. We saw that with St. Peter's. I mean, went to Elite Eight, and no one even knew who they were at the beginning of the tournament. And they ended up upsetting Kentucky, got hot. Washington State could be hot, but, hey, a and is hot too. We'll see how they go. That go. Uh, they play at nine thirty on Tuesday, but before that at seven, um, Xavier plays Saint Bonaventure, and the winner of that plays the winner of A and M and Washington State. Now, in my head, I'm thinking they're going to be playing Xavier. Xavier's a very solid team. Last time A and M played Xavier was 1965, and that's the only time we've ever played them, and we lost by 12. So hopefully we can get some revenge for the old Aggie basketball players who lost to them back in the day. I mean, a lot of stuff going on this week. A lot of basketball, a lot of baseball. I'm excited. This little video came out. Twitter, it was actually on Snapchat. I had it sent to me on Twitter. However, I got to play I gotta play for y'all right now. I might make a poll later. Y'all go vote. But here it is. <laughs> Two time dudes in the world. You got 
the dipper, you got the soaker. And I'm soaking it, John. <laughs> Yeah, so for those who cannot make out the voices, that is Q, and he was sitting next to Manny Obeski, and he also showed Wade Taylor. They were dipping their Oreos in milk, and they're debating on if you're a dipper or a soaker. So I will come out with a tweet later and see who's a dipper and who's a soaker when it comes to Oreos and milk. But I just thought that was an interesting video that Fly Q posted on his Instagram. Then on nothing on Thursday, and then on Friday, women's tennis plays Auburn, baseball plays Bama, starts their three-game series against them, softball versus ACU, and then men's tennis at Alabama. April 2nd, softball plays ACU, soccer travels to San Marcos, Texas, play Texas State, game two of Alabama versus a and baseball, and then track and field has a dual meet versus Texas in College Station. So, I mean, that's another bit, you know, that Texas ain't no rivalry is huge. If you want to go watch that, go pull up to the track meet. Men's tennis at Auburn on Sunday. Softball finishes their series against ACU on Sunday. Women, women's tennis plays Alabama in College Station. And then baseball plays their game three. That's all going on this next week. I'm ready. I'm going to be excited to cover it. If A&M wins on Tuesday, they'll play Thursday. And if they win that, you know, we'll be here next week talking about it. I appreciate y'all hopping back on our episode seven. Big things are coming. Walk, look out for it next week. We should have a special guest coming on soon. Hey, and I just want to thank y'all for listening and later.